joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I am the God that He with thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word. presence and we come oh God desiring to know the depth of your presence not only in worship not only in this time on Sunday morning but every day all the days of our lives we give you thanks father for loving us so much for making your presence known for lifting us up for challenging us for encouraging us for loving us 
We thank you, O oh God. Give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Okay. Amen. I didn't realize it was already on. Isn't that the case so much? You, you just, there are things that you do normally and, and routinely and you just don't realize it. You don't think about it. Well, we're glad to see you this morning. It's good to have you in worship. Good to be able to celebrate this time and, and just begin a new week together. We look forward to all that we'll be hearing and receiving from God's word during this week. For those of you who are, are visiting with us, a guest, we welcome you. Is it Grozer? G-R-O? C-R-O. All right. Well, it's Larry and Pam. We're glad to have you all this morning. Good to see you. And just glad all of you are here. Uh, we realized something at church council that was a, kind of a surprise and a shock to us. Many of you do not know the lady who is here every Sunday. We rarely have children in the nursery, maybe once every three or four years. And yet Sophie Chang is there every Sunday, ready, willing, and quite able to care for children. So we wanted you to, to meet Sophie. Sophie is standing at the back, back here. Just turn and look at her. She's very shy. She doesn't like all this public announcement stuff. But we're just, Sophie, we're glad you're here. And we appreciate your faithfulness, your commitment, your loyalty, and your, your care for children. So thank you for being here this morning. We appreciate it. Amen. Amen. That's good. Thank you. All right. Um, I want to remind you that you're invited and encouraged. In fact, I've asked you to do this. When you come in, just spend a few moments kneeling in prayer. If you can't kneel, just come to the communion rail and, and have a quick word of prayer for our time of worship. We appreciate you doing that. Today's noisy offering is for VCAM. How in the world we got this far in the year without a noisy offering for VCAM, I do not know. But I want to ask you to be as generous as you possibly can. VCAM has been around for about 35 years, ministering to the people's needs in our community. And they do a fabulous job. I think Carol, uh, I know Carol has worked at VCAM, done some volunteer work. Any of the rest of you done any volunteer work at VCAM? I don't remember if anyone has, but some have. And we appreciate that very much. But we wanna, we, we wanna support them with our noisy offering this morning. Remember our finance committee meeting tomorrow night at six, our church council meeting on Tuesday night at six. Now then, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to work hard. Gonna need some people who work hard. Jerry Whitworth, where are you? Where are you, Jerry? If you came on this side of the parking lot, you have seen the handiwork of Jerry. He has pressure washed this entire side of the parking lot. He needs some help. I mean, he has been out there faithfully for the last three or four days, pressure washing. If you have a pressure washer, get with Jerry, schedule a time so you can coordinate together and come up and have a washing good time uh, for our church parking lot. But if you would do that, Jerry, I'm sure would appreciate the help very much. Now we wanna hear from Liz Orsman, who is managing our uh, craft show while she's coming I got to tell you a little story uh oh we got a red red button here um, Let me use the other yeah button. just a second yeah we'll use number eight you have to speak right into it before she speaks I got to tell you um, I went we, how many of you are familiar with main market on Maine anybody know about that I didn't know about it until I saw the sign, but there are a bunch of vendors down at, at De Leon Plaza. And so I just, I called uh, Liz and said, could I, could I invite some of them to come? And I went down and we had been handed out the sheets. What I discovered was that somebody had beat me to it. Someone was already inviting the vendors. Unless you're it's just wanting to remain anonymous, Belinda, <laughs> Belinda. okay. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to make you tell me who it was, <laughs> but I thought that was great. That was excellent. So Liz, share with us. Okay. We're down to the final countdown. We have four weeks to go. I was looking at my phone just a few minutes ago, figuring it out exactly. And I think I got a little nauseous at the same time. 
Um, just in case there's anybody who doesn't know, the craft show is November 13th. Um, Tom Sal isn't here this morning, but we have the flyers. Probably sacrilegious for me to put that there, but. Oh, you don't need that, okay. okay. We have the flyers for the t-shirts. We have, we're gonna put the order in after su next Sunday. So if you need t-shirts, please, please, please put your order in. Um, we have 10, I just filled mine out because apparently I have seven in my family that need them. Um, that puts us up to 17, but we need to hit 24 to get the price that we've got on here. So if you need shirts, please, please put your order in. If for some reason you forget, um, just call or email me and we'll, we'll get you on the, we'll, we'll get you on that list. Jerry, I don't know how you've done it, kind sir, but he has got the room all fixed up back there for people to start bringing in their items. Silent auction items, um, craft items for our craft booth. Anything that you've got that you're ready to bring in, we have tables, we are ready to start bringing them in. So thank you, Jerry. He worked really hard to fix that up for I us. Um, and I think that's all I have this morning. Okay. I don't, you know, except for the fact that I'm kind of nauseous because I just realized it's four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, and if, there are sign-up sheets out in the foyer. Yeah, there are sign-up um, sheets out in the foyer. For various activities for the, for the craft show. So if you would sign up to help out, that would be greatly appreciated. You will remember that we canceled last year because of the pandemic. And, and what I'm discovering, I think what we're all discovering, it's a little bit difficult to restart something that's been stopped for a year. So uh, we need your help. And if you will talk, talk to Liz uh, and see what she, can, what she needs, sign up sheets are out there, we'll have a great time. Are there other announcements that need to be made at this time? Well then, when you get your hymnal, it's the small black hymnal, the, the paperback hymnal. And the, the initial, the words of this hymn, it's the very first hymn in that book. The words to this hymn are a little bit different, but it's um, the tune of Rejoice the Lord is King. So do not be afraid to stand and sing out.
He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. During our offering time, uh, we'll hear from Bill Myrick again. And throughout the time of the service, and particularly perhaps at this time, you're welcome to leave your offering in the, pl in the plate. We will take the, the noisy offering before we sing our doxology.
freely you have received, freely give, and what you give, God makes something really beautiful of. So, Elizabeth, if you would just continue playing for a bit and bring you notes. Now, just so we're very clear, we do receive quiet money as well. So if you'd like to tiptoe to the little bucket and drop in a hundred dollar bill, that would be really, really good. On the other hand, I like to make a lot of noise. Him before the word will come after our prayers for the people. So if you have prayer requests that you would want to share with us or praises, words of praise and thanksgiving, now's the time to be quiet before God for a few moments. Let's hear what God might be speaking into our own hearts and lives and let us be in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are deeply grateful this morning for your presence here. And we come here, Lord, each Sunday only to discover and be reminded that you have been with us all week long. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your guidance and your direction. Thank you for your strength and your patience with us. Thank you, Father, for loving us unconditionally, even in our unlovely moments. We thank you for getting us together, not only together here, but together with your body of Christ around the world, across this nation and in our own community. We're thankful, Father, for the many times 
that you have taken an active part in our lives. You've directed our footsteps. You've directed our, th our thinking. You've challenged us. You've encouraged us. And we're grateful. Father, we're grateful, too, that you hear our prayers and that there have been so many prayers that have been answered in marvelous kinds of ways. And these folks whom we have called by name before your throne of grace this morning, we ask that you lay your hand upon each one and bring healing of spirit, of soul and of body. Father, for those who have lost loved ones, we pray your comfort and your hope and your love for them, for the families and the friends. For those who have suffered accidents, who have had injuries, we pray that your hand of healing will rest upon them. Father, for those who have been going through so many things for so long and who have stood faithfully, we ask that you lay your hand upon them, assure them of your presence and bring them to the healing that you desire for them. For those who've had surgery, help them to recuperate and recover completely and swiftly. And for those of us, O oh God, who sit here this morning, waiting upon you, listening for your voice, expecting a touch from your hand, we're glad to be here. We thank you, Father, and thank you for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, we pray these things as we share the prayer that he himself has taught us as his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 408. Perhaps a, another unfamiliar hymn, but my goodness are the words so powerful. It is taking the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians and putting it to song. So would you stand as we sing and as we work through this together?
version of Jesus' response to that question. The question that was asked in Mark was, what is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus replied. In Luke, the question, the response comes in response to the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And this was a, a lawyer who was schooled in the Jew Jewish law. And so he asked the question of Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus gives him that, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said, well, I, I, I understand all of that. But uh, tell me, Jesus, just who is my neighbor? Now, I can't I can't say that he asked it like that, but it does say that wishing to justify himself, he said, who is my neighbor? And Jesus responds with this passage from Luke beginning in chapter 10, verse 30. Jesus replied and said, a certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. You know this story. We call it the Good Samaritan, but it doesn't hurt to hear it again. He fell among robbers. They stripped him and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. And by chance, a certain priest was going down on that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Lef Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed him by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan who was on a journey came up on him. And when he saw him, he felt compassion. He came to him, bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put, put him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. And then Jesus asks the lawyer, the scribe, a man schooled in Jewish law, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, the well, the one who showed mercy toward him. And Jesus said to him, go and do the same. There are so many lessons to be learned in this particular passage. The first is that you need to realize the relationship between Samaritans and Jews. There was no love lost between the two groups of people. Jesus chose a Samaritan for the very purpose of showing that everyone is our neighbor. Family, in one sense of the word, is our neighbor. People who live next door to us are neighbors. And that's, that's what we have generally limited neighbor to meaning, is the folks who live closely around us. But the fact is, the people in Afghanistan are our neighbors. The Taliban are our neighbors. The Democrats are our neighbors. The Republicans are our neighbors. The independents are our neighbors. You see, I, I was very careful. I wanted to get them all in there. I, but that's fact. That's fact. And we treat each other like we're, we're pariahs because we don't think the same. We don't believe the same. We don't act the same. We don't look the same. But God says, love our neighbor. So, okay, we need to find out what that word love really means. There are several words. In fact, there are five words in the Greek language which, which are translated by the one word love in English. And boy, is that woefully inadequate. We're only going to be concerned with two of the words this morning. We're going to, we're going to be concerned with, with uh, the word that comes from phileo, which means filial love, which is a family friend, brotherly kind of love. Uh, it, it's kind of ironic that Russell and Jill find themselves in the city of brotherly love at this point in, in their lives. That's what Philadelphia means, city of brotherly love. That's what fili filial love is. It, there is a, a specific attachment and relationship attached to filial love. It's family. It's very close friends. Okay. 
But that's not the word that Jesus used here when he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength and your neighbor as yourself. It's not the word that that Paul used in 1 Corinthians 13 when he says love is kind and love is patient. It does not seek its own. It does not hold a grudge anywhere along the way. The word that Paul uses, the word that Jesus used in every one of those situations is the word we all know. It's agape. Now, that word has an extremely special and powerful meaning. First of all, it originates with God. Love always originates with God. But this is, this is, I I call this more of a generic love of the highest order. This is a love that is all encompassing. This is a love that is incomparable. It's unconditional. It is selfless. It is unmerited. It is unearned. It is even undeserved. That's what agape love is. Now you say, well, if that's what it is, there's no way I can do that. And I guess bottom line is by ourselves on our own, you're probably right. We could not love like that, except that God first loved us and made it possible for us to love in like manner on a human plane as God loves. And so when God says to love our neighbor, in part what it means is that we are not to think of ourselves first, but of our neighbor first, remembering who our neighbor is. Are there people, you don't have to raise your hand, but are there, you don't even have to shake your head, but I'll ask the question anyway. Are there people you do not like? Mm -hmm. Oh, I heard somebody laugh. (laughs) <laughs> are, there, are there people that you just, you would rather not be around? They are your neighbor. See, that makes it very personal. But God says to love them unconditionally, to love them in a selfless kind of way. Agape love is, is love that, that gives in a selfless kind of way, never expecting anything in return. Not expecting a kind word. I, I have this theory that if I do not take up the, the right turn lane at traffic lights, you know, I'm going to leave the lane open for people who want to turn right on red. I have the theory that when I come to that place, then I'm going to be able to turn right on red because there's nobody in front of me. Doesn't work that way. You see, I'm not loving in the way that God wants me to love. I love the person behind me, but I'm expecting my turn at the right turn lane also. I have to work on that. But see, those are the kinds of things that we have to work on. You have to work on. And yes, you out there have to work on them as well. I know that because that's human nature. We tend to think of ourselves before we think of anyone else. We tend to do that. Not everybody and not all the time. But it's so very important that we understand that the love that God wants us to show to people is unconditional. It gives without expecting anything in return. Why? Just because. We love, the, 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 the Apostle John tells us over in 1 John, we love because God first loved us. We don't know how to love, except that God loves us and now loves through us. When I do premarital counseling, I, I've shared this with you before, but when I do premarital counseling, I ask the, the, each one, who do you love most? Mary or God, John or God. And inevitably, the girl will answer, well, God. And the guy goes, what? You love God more than you love me? Well, yeah. And invariably, the guy will say, well, if I'm honest, I got to say I love Mary more. But what I tell them is if, if we will love God first and most, what happens is that we're able to love each other far more effectively and appropriately then we could love on our own. 
And in the process, we find out what it means to love ourselves. Remember, Paul tells us that we, that our body is the temple, our very being is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God resides within us. If Jesus Christ is our Savior and our Lord in a personal kind of way, His residence was within us, enabling the kind of love that He wants us to love with. And so we begin to understand that we are to love our neighbor in the same manner that we love and care for ourselves. Not any inappropriate kind of ways, no untoward kinds of ways, no selfish or ambitious kinds of ways. I will love you if. Do you ever get that feeling from some people? I will love you if. I will do something for you if. They may not say it that way, but that's kind of the way they leave it. That's kind of the way they live in your presence. I will do something for you if you will do something for me. Real genuine God love says, I will do for you regardless, unconditionally, without thinking of myself. Now, is that easy to do? Probably not. Those are things we have to learn. We have to practice. I mean, how often have we told our children, Practice makes perfect. If you want to be good at something, you've got to practice it over and over and over again. Our, our great granddaughter Miley is, is on the volleyball team at Howell. And one of the things I've told her, and I'm sure her parents have told her as well, and maybe Liz has told her, maybe Jalissa has told her, if you want to get better, you've got to practice. You practice your serve. You practice your, your setting. You, you practice the whole game. And it takes time. It takes effort. It takes energy. That's no different from the spiritual life. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes your commitment to get better at loving. In order to get better at loving, you've got to love. It's not going to happen just because. You have to make it happen in your life. I guess that's the whole challenge of the Christian faith. It doesn't just happen. It comes with it comes with a knowledge of this word. You see, a lot of people struggle in life because they don't know that Jesus has said the things that he said across the board about life and living. He doesn't know what Jesus has said about relationships. He doesn't know Jesus, what, what God has said about loving one another. Jesus, oh, on so many occasions, told his disciples I want you to love as I have loved you. Love others as I have loved you. How do you think Jesus loved his disciples? You, you think about that, you talk about that, you, you pray about that, and then just say, hmm, that's the way I'm supposed to love the people I don't like. And we all have people we don't like, somewhere along the line. But you know what I found? The more we love people we don't like, the more we find out that, why didn't I like this person? I'm not sure because I'm busy loving. So let's get busy really loving. If there's someone that you disagree with, maybe someone who doesn't like you, do you, do you think that might be possible somewhere along the line? As, as there are people you may not like, do you think there may be someone somewhere who, who does not like you? Love them back. That's all I can tell you. Do kind things. Do thoughtful things. Respectful things. Honoring things. Recognizing that every human being is a person of worth in the eyes of God. Way back in the book of Genesis, God says, let us make man in our own image. We are created in the image of God. We carry within us the capacity to reflect the character and the nature of God. And over in John, 1 John chapter 4, John says, God is love. 
That's the character and the nature of God. We, on a human plane, can do that. The question is, will we do that? Will you do that? Will I do that? That's the question God wants to ask us. Which of these three do you think loved the man on the road? The one who showed him love, the one who showed mercy. Is that going to be your lifestyle? Is it going to be mine? Only time will tell. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that in this world where there is so much hatred, in this world where there is so much conflict and confrontation, where there is so much violence, you have told us to love as you have loved us. Father, we're grateful for that directive. We're grateful for that admonition. We just ask you to help us do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hymn number 402 just makes the comment, this, and, and this is a prayer. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Not just in the way I act, not just in the way I behave, not just in the way I present myself, but I want to be a Christian in my heart. If that's your prayer and you turn this song, this hymn into a prayer and let God know that, He'll answer the prayer. Let's stand as we sing. I want to be a Christian. I want to be more loving. I want to be holy. I want to be like Jesus. Where? Right here. Right here. Not just out here, but right here. As you go out those doors, let that prayer that you've just sung 
ring in your heart and take it into the world and purpose in your heart to love the people you meet this week. May God bless you. May he encourage you. May he strengthen you. May he open your heart and mind and life to all he has for you. In Jesus name. Amen. Have a great week.